The frickin' laser power! Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. I've been so poorly, I should be wearing some of these right now. So I do apologise on the uh, tonal quality of my voice. I think you've... Uh, started to notice that in videos and um, you may well be aware now that I've been ill for quite a long time so bear with me on that and hopefully it'll clear up. I'm one of those people who continues to do so much stuff even though I'm ill and then get to the point where I'm really ill and become bed bound so I've spent the last um, sort of 12 hours in bed and I just had to get out and do something. So this arrived and you can see I spent a lot of money today. It was £92.85 and it came all the way, I think, looking at this, from the Netherlands via Germany, uh, which is a, an Elector. If you've ever read the magazine, Elector, it's a box of stuff. They had a sale recently and a good friend showed me he'd bought something and I thought, oh, i got to get in on that. And that's what we're going to have a look at today. And also while I was at it, I bought an extra little book for me because I thought I might need a little Reedy Reedy book. To just show you the um, Reedy book first, it looks really awesome. It says Projects with ARM and Arduino Controller Area Network. And you know I like playing with CAN bus. I did the booby Cortex and lots of messing around with car systems. And this book is about using the Cortex M processor. So I was like, oh, cool, let's see what other people have done with it. And maybe I'll get some ideas. We've already got the hardware, so we'll play with stuff. What else do you get? Ooh, stickers. I do like that. That's, I think, actually, that's really quite cute, isn't it? Is that a Raspberry Pi? Yeah, it's a sort of Raspberry Pi um, chart and uh, the GPIO chart for a Raspberry Pi. Interesting. I'm not sure why they chucked that in. I thought it was a resistor colour chart, but yeah, that might be nice if you work with a pie a lot. And then another card. So it has been an amazingly eventful couple of weeks, really. Because, of course, it's supposed to be, for me, Easter vacation. And uh, vacationing is not something I do well. Oh, my word. Before we go on to that, look at this. There's so much stuff in here. No wonder it's an expensive thing. Crikey. Right. Oh, my word. <laughs> my life. Look at that. That's an Arduino. A load of plastic parts. Oh, I don't know if I've even got instructions. Let's take all this out. God, I hope this is an instruction sheet. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Although that's probably some photosensitive taper. So I shall reveal to you what this is. Uh, Elector a while back did a thing called the Sandwriter where it basically had uh, made a little CNC type machine that would write the time in the sand, in a piece of sand and you could see the time and then it would sort of vibrate the sand flat again like an etch sketch and then draw the time again every time the, the time changed. And they've since upgraded that kit to this one and the idea being instead of using um, sand you use a laser so they've got this really quite impressive looking laser diode it's quite massive you can see it right there in, under the shine of the, the paper and um, it fires the laser at this photo sensitive paper which uh, should glow I mean I'm going to hold it up to the light here on our bench and let's see does it yes yeah, so you can see it does glow there it's just giving off a hard half glow um, I'll hold it there for a while while I talk because you noticed it wasn't like really green glowy glowy glow like we used to have as um, kids. Do you remember when you had stuff where you'd charge your watch up? Oh, and that's kind of bright, but it's it's fading quickly. It's fading quickly. So I think uh, that's kind of what you want because if you're using something that's going to repeatedly write something and do time, you want it to fade quickly. So I'm going to put that carefully away because it's easy to chuck that. So it's based on a... Arduino and um, it's basically a semi-assembled kit if I recall they 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 kind of they kind of taken the fun stuff out of it for us guys because I suspect they wanted to make it a kit that anybody could make so they've uh, removed the need you can see here the mix of doing some of the surface mount stuff but that's fine we'll roll with that what is that <laughs> A 17385 volts. Is that a crazy, crazy? Look at this thing. I've never seen that package. Is that a regulator? Is that something for the diode? Maybe it's a power transistor. Crikey. There's so much stuff here that without instructions, I'm rather worried. Look. 
literally a bag of pieces, but they do even have the battery. That's awesome. We'll just keep going there. We'll just have a look at what we've got. Um, and then if I have to resort to going and getting some instructions from somewhere, which I suspect I will. But I don't even know what it looks like, to be honest with you. I just sort of loosely remember the article that it was based on. And I just, again, ordered it straight off a whim. I suspect the uh, magazine itself will be uh, a good source of inspiration. <laughs> Probably tells you how to assemble the kit. Ah, so that's a, basically an Arduino Uno standard part there. Um, which kind of implies also that I might need to program it, which kind of sucks because we'll have to install the ID, uh, IDE for Arduino. That's cool. I probably have it already on there. And the downside is if you're always working with all these uh, different chips and IDEs, they all have their own tool chains. Just, just a power supply, by the way. They all have their own uh, tool chains, and it's just ever so easy to forget what goes with what. You know, you can't, you've just what do I run now? So let's have a look, see if we can figure this out. So there's going to be some header pins somewhere in this kit, no doubt, and it's going to clip on one way or another. Got a bit of bentness there. Let's see if we can figure it. So it's definitely can only go on that way. And then we've got here the servo Z, servo L, servo R. So it's going to be basically working in the same way as those 3D printers. You saw the um, Anycubic uh, Cossel printer I have, which uses three arms. It's basically the same way. So it's using, um, I guess, an inverse kinematic to power the end effectors. So that's basically the maths required to figure out where everything needs to be in the sort of XYZ plane. And that's why you've got those three there. And uh, ooh, look at this. It's got an actual uh, PIR sensor as well. I wonder if that's to make it only operate when you are near. Again, it's all guesswork here, isn't it? Can we see an input for that? Not really. And then you've got M plus and M minus, which I'm guessing is for the laser. But remember, this is it could be also motor, because if you recall, it was doing a motor vibratey shake thing. Right, let's just put on, soldering iron on, let's just start putting on what we kind of think we know. And I kind of think this big old block here is going to go, zoom in a bit for you, it's going to go right there because it's got a lovely little footprint for it. So we'll pop that on. And then while that's cooking, while it's heating up, let's just dig out some of the little bits here. So we know those edge connectors will be needed. So move these plastic parts away. We don't want to damage those. They're always a bit fiddly. But they're again the quality. Just to show you, it's really nice, and it still has the wrappings on. I'm almost inclined to leave them on because I'm just so lazy. But it does look like it's a lot easier to take them off than it is on uh, sometimes on the sort of weird wood stuff that's got it. And we'll get our 3D printed soldering reel dispenser working. Incidentally, by the way, if you have a 3D printer roller solder real dispenser try to um, make sure it's the same width as your roll because sometimes the solder does like to jump over the edge and then get caught on the spindle I'll have to have a look at the old three you know what people do with 3d printed filament stop it doing it but I guess filaments a bit thicker doesn't like to jump so easily okay let's get on with it enough talk more of that sweet sweet soldering goodness I'm going to pop that in there and let's have a look. Let's see what we can see. And this isn't one of my boards, so I kind of want to be a bit more cautious now because it's a, it's an expensive third party kit, so not so easy to replace if you really screw it up. But I think we'll be okay. Gosh, that's a dirty old soldering iron tip there for some reason. I think it might be my uh, tip cleaner. I've got one of those uh, tip cleaners that looks like a big old dish dish sponge thing. And that's getting on now. Good few years on that thing. So I thought I'd tell you a bit about the things I was up to the last uh, couple of weeks when I've not been convalescing. And the first one it was I've decided to rip out all the carpet in the downstairs of my house and replace them with uh, industrial style <laughs> office carpet tile. 
so that I'd get uh, a lot more longevity out of it because I uh, got a few pieces of secondhand furniture for the lounge uh, a few days before and it looked so good I thought oh that's lovely that is and then I instantly realized that I should have uh, replaced the flooring at that same time because now I've got furniture sitting on old flooring which sucks so I basically uh, ordered 100 square meters of carpet tile um, and uh, yeah this thing ar they arrived on a pallet at my house and um, I pretty much single-handedly cleared out all the lounge and then proceeded to spend the next uh, three days in fact I think it bled over into a fourth day doing the whole house so it was a really interesting experience because what you find is you can lay so I laid the lounge which is let's say for argument's sake about 50 square meters all right I laid that in uh, one day which is fine and then the remaining sort of uh, I don't know 20 square meters or 30 were downstairs that I had to lay took ages in comparison and the reason is with carpet tiles it doesn't really matter on the area you're trying to do it's the circumference because on the circumference is where you need to make all the cuts so it doesn't if you can imagine the uh, main bits in the uh, middle of the room don't take very long to do because you can just go nuts on that you're just chucking down the tiles but then you've got to work that circumference so if you're doing it Try to base your time, it's going to take you not on the volume, sorry, not on the area, say, but the edge, the circumference. Now, um, I don't know if flux is recommended on this board, but I'm going to certainly use it. So once I'd done all that and uh, lugged all the old front office out, the front office contains probably most of my retro computers, many of which you've yet to see. Um, I've decided that I didn't want to put any of that stuff back now that lovely carpet tile is, is laid um, so we've got now a hallway full of uh, retro computers and I'm uh, awaiting a few shelves so I've ordered some shelves and then trying to tidy it up you know I don't have a man cave as such but um, I certainly have the potential to make one Let's clean that up. Come on, there we go. Um, so yeah, throughout all those moves, of course, I say I had that flu, cold, virusy thing, and uh, yeah, that's I think what's really hit me hard. And I know that's not particularly exciting what I've been up to, but there is more, and the, the thing that there is more bit is way more exciting, and that's because I'm going to be in a movie. And when I say that, I'm not going to be starring in a movie. I'm not like a prima donna who uh, who thinks um, <laughs> who's going to oversell oversell what I did. But it was really fun. Um, so basically, if you know Stuart Ashen, he's got a movie coming out which is uh, Ashen and the Polybius Heist, and I believe that's. Uh, well, it's definitely a second movie, and I believe I've got the title right. <laughs> I uh, backed this thing on, I think it was Indiegogo, a while back, because I really liked the first movie. So if you haven't seen uh, Ashen and the Quest for the Game Child, go check that out. And then I believe he uh, raised the, uh, did the Indiegogo campaign to raise the uh, finances needed for the second movie um, a while ago. So it, was, it feels like a while ago, anyway, I can't really quite remember when it was. And... Um, Basically, I think they'd done a, a, a scene change because they started filming, I think, about nine days, eight, eight or nine days ago. And I think they, they basically needed extras um, or I don't know what they call them, su supporting cast or something. There's a, a nicer term for it. Um, they've got a few different terms uh, for the different types of people. And um, I said I'd go along and help. And uh, that's basically basically it. And I was, I was kind of really embarrassed to ask. I'm not like one of these people who who just kind of like asks these things. So it was kind of roundabout way. Um, I, and I thought it'd be really cool because I just want to see how it's done. You see all these things on, on telly um, and I've, I've seen them recording 
stuff in studios, you know, like the BBC. I've seen that and it's so interesting to watch because what you learn is a lot of the stuff we do for these YouTube videos, for example, they do as well. It's, it's kind of like you have to do. It's a physical um, art, isn't it, really, video. You can't... Um, you've got lighting, you've got certain things, but they just do it as a job. You know, they're really professional with it and very consistent. It's costing a lot of money for those people to be there. So they just... Um, they're very, you know, down to business with it all. You know, they just hit right, we've got to do this, get set the lighting, go, go, go. And the thing that amazes you the most is how everybody functions so autonomously in their role. They're really good. It's really defined jobs. So you'll have wardrobes a job, you've got uh, makeup, you've got lighting, and then you've probably got the camera people, and you've got the boomy people, and you've got the people who say action, and the people who say scene one, take four. Uh, it's just amazing. And everybody's got a job, and everybody just does it. They're like a, a hive of bees, you know, they just buzz around doing all their stuff, really super professional, and uh, really, really quite lovely, really. They're just normal people doing a normal day job. And um, you, you just have to be really attentive. I think that's the best thing you could ever be. If you're asked to do this, don't be a prima donna. You're like, you know, you're an, you're an extra. Christ's sake. Even if you are even if you're an actor, right, don't be a prima donna because you're just one thing. One little cog in this industry, this 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 uh, machine that needs to run. And that's why I thought it was just wonderful. Everyone's so humble and normal. Um because it's it's a group effort, isn't it? If you think about it, it's a group effort. So um I'll tell you a little bit about my experience then. So I kind of found this this room rocked up there and pretty well looked after to be honest with you um, and we did a little bit of uh, makeup you have to do a bit of makeup and um, you go into uh, the the sort of um, makeup seat where the lady is and she starts giving you a bit of uh, a bit of makeup and before I go into further on beyond makeup I think I need to get the instructions otherwise I'll have nothing to talk about while I do this Clearly I'm back, yes. I did need to print the instruction manual and look how thick this is, right? Quite thick, but this is printed with four pages per side of A4. It's actually a 68 page manual, would you believe? So what I've done is I've plugged the servo motors onto this and I've plugged it into the PC, downloaded the Arduino software and then basically powered it up because it's calibrated all these to be now at their midway positions. You can't really tell just by looking at them, but they're at their midway, so I think that's important. Let's not touch them. So I'm going to try to follow these incredibly tiny pictures. Now, I've left myself with pretty small, tiny pictures to work with. It's kind of disheartening when you're on this page of a really massive page document, but a lot of it does seem to be just uh, pictorial drawings on how to just put the bits together. So it says, now we're on steps seven to eight, preparing the base plate. So that's going to be one of these plates, no doubt. And the one with probably the least amount of cuts, I should think. Ah, this one. This is quite small when it's done, really. It's quite nifty. It's not, yeah, I thought it was going to be massive like this, but no, that's going to be the base plate. Find the base plate from the acrylic parts and remove the protective sheeting. Okay, we'll do that. And uh, yeah, so yeah, makeup, that's where we got to. We got to makeup. So what they did, um, really, the lovely lady there, she um, didn't really need to do much because obviously I'm such a handsome fella. Um, but she said uh, she wanted to darken my hairline a little bit because of course, I'm getting a little bit thin on top. So it's nice to have that youthful vigor. So she put some spray stuff that apparently you can buy in the chemists from like L'Oreal, Men Expert, hair darkifying solution or something. And uh, pop that in. And uh, she actually put a bit in the lid and put it on my beard too to give me a luxurious beard. And that was that really. Uh, let me just position this up. I think it goes that way. It's not particularly uh, clear in that tiny picture. We'll go for it. And then I went across to costuming or um, 
I think that's costuming what they're called. And then they just uh, did something uh, equally similar by putting uh, various um, clothing on me, one of which is a lab coat because I was a scientist appropriately. God, this picture's really crap, but I'm gonna show you now which way around it appears to have to go. So if you've got this at home, you can see just about there's a square on one side and there's not a square on the other. Have that little square on the left. And uh, that's pretty much, it seems, how it should be. <clears throat> so they do your uh, makeup and brush out your beard and again give you your, your costume. And then I was just sort of instantly whisked away because apparently I was due. They were sort of, they seemed to be waiting for me to film one of the bloody scenes. So that was a surprise. Ah, there we go, lost the standoffs there. Wondering where they got to. Um, so yeah, you're pretty much thrown in at the uh, deep end when that happens because <laughs> you just gotta get going, don't you? So I'm just looking at the picture though. In picture seven here, they're showing them actually sticking the uh, clear rubber feet. Oh, yeah. So that's the clear rubber feet going on it that way round. And let's see, did they flip it over? Yeah. Yes, they did. So we're gonna stick the clear rubber feet on first. Um, and when I got in there, it was all, basically everybody was there. Like imagine the whole entire company, including the real, real actor who, I can't remember his name now off the top of my head. I do apologize, but he was absolutely fantastic and lovely, lovely to speak to, really nice guy. Um, and I was given, uh, here we go, given my directions by the uh, director, um, Riyadh, and he's a really nice guy, by the way, the, the chap directing the uh, movie. I'd met him um, at a YouTube event with Barry Lewis and Stuart Ashen, like years ago, like a couple of years ago, and it was so fantastic to sort of meet the same people again in a, a totally different setting. And he was really, really good, you know, really clear in what he wanted. Um, do this, do that, stand here, look busy. Um, and the directions is fantastic. And, you know, mind you, you're, you're effectively a, an extra, right? Remember, you're, you're, you're a nothing in this. Before you let anything get to your head, by the way, if you're ever asked, remember, so as I said, you're, you're a nothing in this and everybody has to work together. So you, you kind of are surprised a little bit in how lovely and respectful everybody is to everybody um, and that's because you're, you're all there to do a thing isn't it you're all there to get this this show on the road as it were so let's just figure this out so that goes in that way oh suss that one out then so there's your spacer there's your screw and you're screwing it that way with the doodads pointing up now what's the next step is the push button assembly Ooh, exciting stuff so yeah, um, and I say after a few takes of that, there was some there was some movement. Um, I did have to do a little bit. What strikes you right away though is, oh, I am having to do acting, right? And I mean acting with a small a. Yeah, you're not um, you're not like doing like mega acting, but you certainly are doing <laughs> doing something real and uh, stressful, and you have to be careful. So what this, oh, by the way, this says, um, showing two sets of pictures for this one, because apparently you can orient it in two ways. Um, hmm. I don't know if the implication on that is that there's gonna be a couple of, oh, I see. So looking at the pictures. So if you, if you have it flat on the desk, that's the A orientation. And then if you have it at an angle, that'll be the B orientation. So I think though, you're going to want to do the B orientation. So I'm going to follow the, the instructions for the B orientation. Because I don't think you want it flat on a desk. I mean, that's never going to work out for you. So the B orientation is saying to use this one. Oh, my crikey, crikey. Look, that snap that, getting that out. Whew. Be a bit careful then when you're popping these out. You don't want to snap anything that's... You don't want to snap. You don't mind snapping the extra spree stuff. And this is preparing the push button. So yeah, it is a little bit nerve wracking. Um, but my again, my advice is just to listen, just listen. You've got like 
I don't know, 20 people in the bloody room with you? 30 people? One holding the lights, one holding the cameras, one doing this, one doing that. Just be attentive and listen and don't talk and make noise and f piss around if, if you can help it. Um, and they will uh, really appreciate that, I should think. Don't mess around. It's always good advice anyway, isn't it? So let's see if they say in here how long that needs to be. Cut approximately 10 centimeters of red and black and strip both ends. If you're planning 15 centimeters, if you're planning on the alternative clock orientation. So you'll need a ruler to do this properly, it seems. Your 15 centimeters. Uh, uh, uh. Let's get that going. Shum. And what really uh, was neat, after they uh, do all the filmingy stuff, they do a period of where they just get everybody to be quiet and they record the background sound of the room. And that struck me because that's something that I do. We all have to do it because you need to calibrate all your equipment in order to do some, if you need to do some background noise removal from your equaliser, it's pretty much the only way you can do it um, because you're basically doing a subtraction from the sound you want. So you're trying to, uh, there we go, I've got that. You're trying to basically make sure you have the best signal to noise ratio. And even if that means artificially re removing background noise to give you the, the maximize the signal you want to keep. So yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff that's very similar. And I, I like that because, you know, if you're like me, you've you've discovered this along the along your path. Um, but yeah, they're doing it properly. You also have a lot of checklists and things like that that uh, I don't have. But I do know uh, other YouTubers who do. And... The purpose of those, of course, for them is so that they don't miss anything. I'm just sort of checking something here because I think, did I just cut? That looks a little bit short. I just, <laughs> I think, yeah, it's okay, I think. Uh, I cut these wires and I kind of think, did I just cut them off the off cut? No, that's really long. I just didn't measure it decently enough. Make sure you measure it a little bit more. You get a couple of mil on each one. And I think we're going to need a little bit of heat shrink because you're preparing this switch yeah it's fine so we're just going to assemble this switch so after that um was basically a case of going back to the green room and the green room was really where just everybody was hanging out um all the the extras before they get on and it's just like that tv show extras have you seen that tv show extras yeah you probably have with ricky gervais it really is just exactly like that, and people become f quite friendly. I suspect if you're on a, a big thing where you're going to be there for a while, like maybe a, a couple of days, you'll all get to know each other. I met some really nice people. I think everybody was nice, to be honest with you. Um, so everybody's there for a purpose. All the all the staff were really and crew. They're all really professional. I mean, they were, it's their day job, right? They've been doing it for years and years. They know what to. Uh, what to expect and how to make sure. Basically, I think a lot of their job, be honest with you, is not to add stress to the situation because the last thing you want when you have these uh, people there and you know, you've got people who are kind of real actors there and they're really trying to remember all these lines and all these movements and where they've got to walk and how they've got to you know, look or expressions, all of that stuff. The last thing you want is people to get aggravated. And I think that that's probably why everybody's so nice. It's because it's you're trying to keep a nice, calm environment. You don't want stress. And there you go. Nice. Um, and on my part, you know, you're just trying not to look stupid. Don't look stupid. Don't screw it up. Because you're really cognizant. If you f screw up, you're adding to these guys day and remember they start at 5 p.m. and work till 5 a.m. we had lunch nearly midnight so I got there around 6 and we had lunch at midnight would you believe so they've got a long long day ahead of them and they probably started quite early as well I mean I'm sure they didn't start at 6 in the morning but they probably started up pretty early 
I started 4 a.m. that day. I tell you what, I was shattered by the time I drove home. Um, so yeah, you're really cognizant that you don't want to mess it up for those guys because they've got more work to do. They don't need you screwing up. Let's get this gone. But yeah, no, I was really, I was happy with it, and uh, I went back to the green room, got all the uh, gear taken off uh, because we were getting um, new gear. Um, for the next scene to wear and then they do something called I think it's called blocking where they get everybody to stand around and uh, not necessarily dressed up just to, to sort of build the set build the scene where everybody's gonna be standing where everyone's gonna be sitting so they can work out all the lighting because you can imagine you need to get it's like a dress rehearsal really um, and you have you have all sorts of rehearsals because you have rehearsals for doing uh, your dress up and you have rehearsals for all of the lights and, and movements and all of those things. And the, the, when I say rehearsal, you're not talking hours, you're talking literally for a couple of minutes just before you start turning the cameras on. Right, so we've got this part now. Attaching the side rails. Find the two side rails. It feels like it's going to be a bloody long video, doesn't it? <laughs> I do feel sorry for you at home. <laughs> And we're attaching those there again with these pictures. It's an awful lot of squinting on my part, but yeah, I think that's how that's going to go. And this scene was uh, the next scene we did was again. It was it was way more people. So the first one was just me and the actor guy in the on the camera. And I don't know what you'll get to see of me if you just see my hand. I, I, honestly, it will be something like that. It's not going to be any more. I promise you. Um, and in the second scene, you're probably going to be the, see the back of my head. But you might recognise what I'm wearing, my grey hoodie, because it's got a grey hood. So keep a look out for that, see if you can see my grey hoodie, the famous grey hoodie that I wear to all the expos, purely because it's, it's both warm and comfortable and lightweight to carry around. Um, so yeah, because it had that many people, it did take a bit longer, and there were a few... Um, there's a few different things. So once you, there's, they basically film everything from one angle, and then they might go really close up to the uh, actors' faces, and start to film at a different angle. So you can imagine in the end they just repeat loads and loads of things over and over again, and then when they get to the uh, editing, I suppose they're going to just choose which way to to do it. I mean, I think you've seen that sometimes when you watch telly shows where they'll zoom in on someone. When someone has to say something serious, you know, it'll zoom in and they'll look all frowny. And it's probably the difference between something that's a cheap show and a, an, or a movie versus a TV show because maybe they won't bother um, doing this so much. And uh, in terms of the camera and hardware, it's all quite nice. It's all really proper professional stuff. But again, nothing unrecognisable to anybody who's at least got some semi kind of pro hardware it's definitely not shot on a sony handy handy cam uh but if you've got you know if you're doing dslr video with lighting and stuff like that you'll recognize the bits you'll just be buying the cheap and nasty stuff off ebay like me good look at this we're scooting on now got that going you got that going nice so you've got to use, if you've seen these constructions, it says 2 times M3 times 10. And that's, oh, is that an M3 times 10? I'm going to guess it is. I'll have a little look-see when I try. And while all this is going on, of course, you've got access to water and food and all of the usual things you've seen. A little buffet table set up, some snacks. Just exactly like you've seen. Um, and would I do it again? In a heartbeat. It was great fun. Um, if you go in it with the right mindset that you're doing it for fun, you're not necessarily going to make much money, if anything, off it, depending on what it is. If it's like a indie movie, just do it for the love of doing it. If you like uh, a little bit of gentle <laughs> acting, you know, pretending to do something, you'll, you'll really like it. Crikey, look at this bloody thing. Keeping this nut in place. Look at that, you can't get your finger in. I'm gonna have to do it. Oh no, 
Oh, caught it. Um, yeah, go for it. But I would, I would, there was something about, one, you're being told what to do, so you don't have to think. You've got a lot of people looking after you, checking that you're okay and uh, seeing if you need food. And, you know, don't be afraid, by the way, if you're not comfortable or you have something going on to ask somebody. I mean, I, I did that a couple of times. They won't think you're an idiot. They'd prefer you to ask than just do something wrong. Remember, it's just like any any company, business, work. Um, they don't want anybody to make mistakes because it costs time and money. So better to ask before the cameras are rolling. Um, all right, we're going to just need some bits here. That one. Um, mm -mm. And that one. And remember, effectively, while this is all going on as well, you're more or less um, ad libbing. So there's no. Um, there was very little direction when you when they tell you we want you to do this, that, and the other. So listen and have a proper think before you do it. Right. So what I was trying to do was I was really Let's say, say for example, someone says to you, um, look busy on a computer, for argument's sake, right? And uh, obviously you're not doing work, you're not at the computer to do something, but just try to imagine your, yourself, what are you actually doing? What would you be doing if you had that computer at home and you were bloody doing some work on it? And then that, that's all you do, just act that way. And then if someone says, you know, you're, this is the scene, in this scene, you're really um, happy. You know, you feel joyful, you feel elated. Try to think of something in your head that, you know, like a, a something in your real life that that was like that. And then try to just imagine how you'd act. The, the worst thing, I, I, I see this now, and I hope that it doesn't do that. I, at least I'm not a speaking part, so it definitely will not... Um, have a, a severe impact you know you as I say you might not even see me you might just see my hand um, but it's people look like they're waiting to speak so you literally look like you're waiting for the other person to stop talking so that you're going to deliver your line and I don't think that's how people are in real life they tend to be a little bit more animated right so we have to get another servo off so it's the z-axis servo let's have a look here which one's that one that says R that one says L, and that one says Z. So I'm going to be careful. This is the Z axis servo. And it looks like you have to poke it through carefully. Nice. And then uh, while I was there, of course, um, it was nice to see Stuart again, have a chat. And just it was just quite friendly, all very friendly and convivial. Just to be super clear, watch closely on this. See this servo? You put this small hat on at that orientation, and then the second hold down you use the longer self-tapper from the kit. So this is the kit. Use the longer self-tapper. And you put it through to that arm, and then the arm, big hole of the arm, will be there, and there'll be a dog leg kink like that. And then what you do is go in your little box of tricks, and then look for there'll be a machine screw, and it's that one right there. I'll show you right now, nice and clear. See that machine screw there? That's the one you're going to use. Well, I'm kind of guessing, to be honest with you, but I'm pretty sure you're going to use for putting the hat onto the top of the servo. Now, there's a bit of a gotcha here. Get that on there. Make sure it's all pretty much exactly aligned as when you ran the Arduino software. So it's still kind of 90 degrees. It might snap one way or another, a little tiny bit, but I can't help that. Servos won't sit exactly, even Stevens. And then what you need to do is you take this. Now, you don't mount the server in the top how I showed you. You actually mount it through. So you can put the arm in. Depending on how you've done it, you, could, you might have already done this, but I, I've done it afterwards. You have it like that. And there's a really good reason for that. So you pop those through. I'll show you the really good reason in a moment. I'll just tighten these up briefly. It won't take too long. In fact, it's not as fiddly as you think. It's just reading the instructions. The instructions are extremely verbose. Um, 
which is good. They have every single step, but if you're not an instruction reader, like me, um, <laughs> you may come a cropper in such a technically detailed kit. So just read the instructions. Don't do as I say. This. No, that's right. That's what. <laughs> do as I say. Don't do as I do. Do 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 do. There you go. A bit of Genesis for you. Now you'll end up with something like that. And again, I know in this light it's terrible to see, but it will look like that. And that's kind of how it looks in the picture. That'll be the orientation. And because I'm using the B layout, you apparently now mount this in like that next to your switch check the instructions for your own layout and then you can see the actuator will be there and of course held in through the usual mounting system right in there what the heck i've got to attach the arduino but it looks like i've set these up wrong not only are the feet and the tabs on the wrong side but also i might have used the wrong spacers so that's good ah you bloody thing okay look Get the black spaces in there, that's good. When you mount your Arduino, if you're going for B, mount it upside down, because this won't fit. It's supposed to go in there, but it can't plug in now. Curse me! And it is quite clear in the instructions. Again, it's me skipping ahead. Remember, this board can have two different configurations, and it's going to bite you if you don't follow the instructions on that. Oh, not much to worry about in the last step, just fix the PIR pointing front ways out. If you have it in the orientation for A, you'll mount the PR in this bracket and it will point that way. But you don't have to worry about that. This is this mounting and it's pretty easy because you can see it's just two screws from the back. Just finished fitting this carriage together. Not too many gotchas, just going to point out a couple. Make sure you have this little spacer thing fitted beforehand because it's a bugger to get to after. You'll notice it says 3M uh, whatever washers plus nu uh, lock nuts. Put them in to there, not too tight. You need this to be move flexible, be able to move. But then you see here, you actually attach this arm to there. So I was a little bit confused why you needed three, but that's why. So clearly this servo can move this carriage around like that. Next stage is preparing the laser. Lots of heat shrinking and extending wires here. So just follow the instructions and see what you need to do. Um, it does pretty much kind of show, as far as I can tell, that you're placing a staggered join. And then go on, I've got really tiny, tiny stuff going on here, but the idea is you're gonna put some standard heat shrink on here. In fact, probably put the bigger heat shrink, the wider piece on first, after you've done that one. I'll show you why. Basically, you're gonna join it to the remaining wire you've got here black and the red and that's why you're using these two pieces and then you're pushing the whole lot through here which is acting as a sort of an anchor point for them all so I'll show you what that looks like when it's done but just to be sure I'm gonna put that on now to make sure I can get it on properly afterwards hope this makes more sense to you now you can see underneath there there's basically the join I made and I've staggered them so that they don't uh, line up together because when you try to push this tube on they'll fight otherwise and then I've heat shrunk that double width onto the end and I'm pushing it all on together and then that's basically like a strain relief onto there because this whole ferrule is going to poke through here so we've got to thread these wires through carefully like so and then that tube Ah, don't snap it. That tube somehow pokes through here. You might loosen those screws a little bit to make sure, but something like that, you get the idea. This step was nice and easy. I just soldered, as per the instructions, the PIR sensor and laser power, the ground, your push button and all the gubbins. So that's pretty simple. Keep it nice and neat. I've actually also tucked all the wires in between the space and the Arduino and its hat. So you can get it looking quite neat. So now I think I have to just start assembling the bits and pieces that go on the top. Feels so right, it can't be wrong. Rocking and rolling all night long. Ooh, delicate. Glowing delicateness. 
hope I got these holes right. It's so bloody sticky. <laughs> ah. No. I don't want you there. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Just going to have to roll with it, I think. <clears throat> yeah. That could have gone way better. <clears throat> oh, but I didn't screw up too much. That's not bad. Yeah. Use a bit of water on the top to, so I can lubricate my pressing. Get all those air bubbles out if you see any. Good to have a credit card or something. Good. Guess we attach the bezel and cut round the edge. Good looking, so refined. Wouldn't you like to know what's going on in my mind? So let me get right to the point. Do, do. I don't pop my cock for every kid I see. Hey, Elector Kit, spend a little time with little old me. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Do, 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 do. God, there can't be much left now feels like we are on the vinegar strokes. I didn't even follow the instructions for the last bit. It just seems so obvious how to get this screen on. Which means, of course, it's all going to go Pete Tong. The stand is assembled. Do, 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 do. Ooh, oh, hang on. Is that what this is? Oh, bum. Stands assembled upside down because you need this hook to stop it falling over. Yay! Now apparently I have to take it over to the computer to program the time in and then the battery on the board will remember it. The only thing I'm not sure about is I hope I've plugged in the left and right servos correctly. I think I can maybe just about get to them there if I need to but, ah, but it's pretty tight. You can see it's spookily dark. That's because I've set the calibration on it and uh, the time using the Arduino sketch interface via USB. A little bit fiddly, but it's not too bad. Just follow the steps as specified. So now when we push the button, it should work. So I haven't got the PIR running right now. I've just got it on manual. So I'm gonna push the button and look. Ooh, lasers. Um, I have to admit, it's a bit fady, it, like it's fading fast. <laughs> Can we even see that? Yeah. I'm not sure really how effective this is as a, as a clock. Um, maybe if you removed all ambient light sources it might work better. I'm pretty sure I can see what's happened and you might not be able to see this right now because the shutter's turned down, but let's turn it on again. There you go. The problem is, is that the piece of paper is mega bright. So I think it's under the really bright lights of the back office, it's basically overcooked it. So there's not much illumination left. And you can see when I run it, look, there you go. It looks nice and bright there. I think it'll work quite well at night. I think the problem is, as I say, the paper is too saturated. Because where I've got all the off cuts and I've chucked them in the bin, you can see them glowing like massively bright. So that's probably all it is. It's just down to my kind of studio-ish type lighting. But So if you see it like there, which is just like a regular thing, you're never going to be able to see anything on this. So yeah, I think it does work. I'd say it does work. It's, 
it's definitely quirky. It's definitely a fun kit. Whether it's worth the money, that's up to you. But I think the value lies in the ability to learn how to do Arduino sketch stuff. Um, so I'm probably going to get the PIR activated and have that uh, come on. And I don't know where I'd leave it. I'd leave it somewhere where it's going to be kind of darkish a lot of the time. <laughs> Uh, and probably somewhere where you don't want to be hearing it twitch. Now, I was hoping uh, to do something with this, and I realised I can't. I was going to program this to store the YouTube subscriber number on my channel in sand so that I could hear it widgeting away when a new sub joins. However, because this screen doesn't have any persistence, it's not going to work out for me. So I would be interested if you've got one of the sand ones and you want to swap it with me for a laser one. I would definitely consider swapping it because the sand is always going to be persistent and I can program it to update the sand when the uh, subscriber count changes. But I just pushed the button there just to show you the operation. It's weird. There's a button here. You push that. But it's like saying no. But after I pushed it three times, it went OK. So I think there's a, a delay in the program to say uh, minimum time between redraws and things like that. So maybe it's ignoring that as if it's ignoring the PIR pulses, if it's getting too many PIR pulses. But yeah, it's cute. It's cool. Consider getting one. So there you go. Find that in your local elector. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Hit subscribe or like or whatever if you're bothered. Um, come join the Discord channel if you want to chat. And as ever, thank you for watching. Yeah, by the way, I've just discovered something. You know when it's freaking out like that and you're pushing the button and it doesn't seem to do anything? Basically, what I think is happening is it's browning out. I don't think the power supply... Do you see like that, how it freaked out? I think the power supply is not able to keep up the one amp, one amp supply this thing bloody needs. So if you get this, the first thing to do is upgrade the power supply because that definitely is having trouble right now driving this. It's probably the freaking laser power.